Hello, movie lovers. Here with Bob. Yes, it's Friday afternoon. Here to talk about the movies I watched this week. And you know what time it is? It's 12.30. 12.30 in the afternoon. So that's early. So Ian can watch my video. Because over there it's probably 5.30 or something. So he has enough time to watch it. Anyway, let's talk about the movies I watched this week. Whoa! That's enough to blow the hairs out the back of your ass! Woo! Woo! Yes. Have another one of those. Ah. Reader's Digest version, people. We're not going to get into it too much, but you just tell you what movies I watched. I keep re repeating that back, but uh, that's all it is. Movies that I watched. All right, I watched The Falcon in Danger. Yeah, on TCM, 1943. Tom Conway. Yeah, he investigates the uh, mystery. It's a mystery. Two guys disappear from a plane. Yeah, it lands and they're not on it. They're not in it. Where the hell did they go? Two industrialists are on a plane that lands. And the people find out that, hey, where the hell did they go? And the Falcon investigates. Gets a six. Six out of ten. All right, then I watched this one. Stephen King's Shawshank Redemption. Yep. Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins is thrown in jail, prison for murdering his wife. He says he didn't do it. I mean, somebody, did, somebody else did it. But everything, everything leads to, towards him. So anyway, he's thrown in prison. He's a new fish, right? Anyway, he becomes friends with Morgan Freeman's character, right? So he spends 19 years in jail. He's in there, and they become buddies. And all this time, Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins, you know, they they become friends. So this is a very good movie, excellent movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I gave it an eight out of ten for Shawshank, 1994. Well, this Blu-ray, right? So that's a very good movie. Now that one I can watch again. No problem. Oof. Ah, that's good. Then I watched Jaws. Oh. <coughs> Comes in a, I guess, a sleeve, a box, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. get a little booklet bunch of pictures in it it's good yeah and this here is on the back fell off of course see it was glued on here that's where it was glued on but it fell off over the years but I don't have any of the other Jaws movies like Jaws two, three, whatever. I don't, I don't have any of those. I don't really care to buy them, only you know, unless I see one or cheap, like a buck or a buck fifty. I might think about it, but I have no intentions to watch them. Like I said, unless. So yeah, I remember this. The summer this came out. What, was, what year was it? Eighty four? No. 75, what am I saying? 75, even here in Toronto, people were scared to go into the water. Not that I could swim that much, but we'll go swimming. But actually down at the beach, there was hardly anybody at the beach. And we don't have any sharks here in Toronto. That was funny. 
But yeah, that one gets a, I think I gave it an eight. Could be a nine, eight. It's a fine movie. Right? Jaws. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Great movie. Oh, boy. Jaws is the kind of movie you can watch it again. I Man, I might even watch it again in July. Who knows? And then I watched... Oh, <coughs> that's what happens if you don't talk to anybody. Um, I watched this movie. Red Dawn, 1984. Patrick Swayze and C. Thomas Howe. Yeah. Lee Thompson. Ben Johnson. A bunch of William Smith. Ron O'Neill, Harry Dean Stanton, he's in it a bit. But yeah, Charlie Sheen. But this is a very good movie. Communist in B, eh? So they're in school, they get, he, he, he drops his brother and his friends off for school, right? And then there's parachuters drop down. Teacher's standing there looking out the window going, what the heck, they're away. They're away out, of course, what are they doing here? Steps outside and they blow them away with a machine gun. Kids are looking out the window, shoot the machine guns in the window, kill a couple of kids, and then then everybody scatters. Like they all fuck off. Everybody jumping in cars, running down the street. These some communist guys are shooting everybody with machine guns, blowing things up, and a bunch of kids get in a truck that uh, Patrick Swayze's driving, right? And they all hop in the truck and they bugger off, and they go to their dad's, one of their kids' dad's place is a, I guess a gas station or a store slash, right? And they pick up uh, sleeping bags and coke and cereal and they head off, go to the hills, they hide in the hills. And the kids fight back, though. They fight back against these guys. Man, is it, this, this is really good. Yeah. Very good movie. I gave it an 8. Red Dawn. Most of you probably saw Red Dawn. Now, this one here Captain Marvel. Marvel. M A R V E L L. Marvel. Captain Marvel. You know, with her, you don't need any superheroes. I don't know why there's so many superheroes. Why why is there so many superheroes? You've got Captain Marvel, you don't need anybody else. Everybody else would sit around and hang out at the beach, you know, suck back a coffee. Whatever. They don't there's no you don't need superheroes. Anyway, in this movie there's the Cree, right? And the Skrulls, right? Stuff like that. And uh, Sergeant Colonel Fury or whatever he was back then. They got him from the Ultimate Comic Books, right? That's Sergeant Fury, I guess. Because Sergeant Fury, the one, Colonel Fury, Sergeant Fury that the old guy here remembers. Not that I'm picking on anything, but he was a white guy. And for, you know, the comic books and the movies and stuff like that, he's a black guy. That's how that works out. See, so, I mean, I'm not, you know, talking about that or anything, but this movie's not that bad. There's a lot of explosions, flying around, and, and stuff like that. But uh, I guess I saw this at the show with my kids, right? So they liked it. I think they gave it a seven. I gave it a seven from uh, what year was this? 2019. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good looking on the big screen or so-called big screen. You know the screens you get nowadays. But yeah, witness the rise of a hero. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, once you have Captain Marvel, all right, you don't need any more superheroes. <laughs> yeah, seven. All right, what else? Oh, I watched Baby Doll. You know, Baby Doll, Baby Doll. Walter Matthew. Eli Wallach, you know, the guy that was in Magnificent Seven is the bad guy. You came back. Carol Baker. She's nice looking. She's not bad to look at. The owner of a successful cotton company is married to a teenager, but she won't have sex with him until she's 20. She won't do the dirty deed until she's 20. So, of course, it's her birthday soon, tomorrow. So this Walter Matthew guy, he's sweating bullets, I having a friggin' attack, right? You can't wait for tomorrow. <clears throat> anyway, Eli Wallach character, he owns uh, another uh, cotton factory, gin factory, whatever it was. 
So nobody's going to Walter Matthew, right, with their cotton. So Walter Matthew decides to burn this guy's fucking factory down, right? And everybody was at the dance except for Walter Matthew. So Wallach, Wallach character, they head off to uh, Walter Matthew's place, and he's taking all the cotton to him so he can, uh, what is it, cure it or, you know, fix it or whatever. And it all takes place at Walter Matthew's house, his rambling house that's falling apart. Yeah, anyway. Baby doll, 1956. There's a lot of yelling and screaming for Walter Matthews' character, right? He's, he's, he's a riot. Okay, I gave it a seven. Yeah, what year was it? I don't know, 19... Oh, shit, I didn't... Oh, 56, pardon me. 56. Yeah, that's from uh, TCM. Yeah, TCM. Uh, but, uh, I also watched uh, The Enchanted Cottage from 1945. It came out... Uh, April 1945 was at the theater. Um, a scarred World War II veteran and a plain young woman discover true love in a cottage, which is an enchanted cottage. They get married, right? But he's scarred. He has a bum arm. His face is all scarred up. And she's a plain Jane. Nobody wants to dance with her. Nobody, you know, she's just a plain girl, whatever the hell that means. But, uh, yeah, so they get married and they live at this enchanted cottage, but they see each other as she's beautiful and there's nothing wrong with him. He doesn't have any scars on his face or he doesn't have a bum arm, right? So that's what that movie's about. It's a very well done movie. I like. I, I can watch the Enchanted Cottage again. Sure, well, another you know next year. I gave that an eight. That's from TCM, the movie channel, right? So. Yep. Robert Young, Dorothy McGuire is the plain Jane, and Herbert Marshall is the blind, their blind friend. He plays the piano and stuff like that, and he talks to them. He he can't see them. He can just hear them, of course, because he's blind, right? But, uh, yeah, so that's what happens when you're living in an enchanted cottage. You see what you want to see. Handsome Robert Young and beautiful Dorothy McGuire. Also, I also watched on TCM. Dark Victory, 1939. Remember that year? 1939. Betty Davis. Betty Davis is supposed to be 23 in this movie. She looks young anyway, but I don't know if she's 23. She's supposed to be 23. George Brent as the doctor, her doctor. Guy operates on her brain. And uh, Humphrey Bogart. He's in it a bit. He's in it a few scenes, right? So... And Geraldine Fitzgerald. Gerald, yeah, I think that's Fitzgerald. Geraldine as um, Betty Davis's friend, right? Yeah, so she's a rich party girl. She lives in a big house. She has all these fancy friends. She has a whole bunch of friends. She has horses and stables with horses in it, I should say. Race horses and stuff like that. And that's who Humphrey Bogart or takes care of her horses. Anyway, she she uh, can't see the lighter cigarette. She falls downstairs. She rides a horse into a fence, smashes it. So they take her to see George Brent. And he operates on her brain. She gets better. Or does she? Uh, yes, eight. Dark Victory. Uh, I can watch this movie again. No problem. I can give this one another watch. Very good movie. Sad movie at the end, but... Uh, yeah, did I cry at the end of this movie? What do you think? I'm sap, remember? But then I watched Time After Time, 1979. H.G. Wells travels from 1893 to 1979 San Francisco in search of Jack the Ripper. And how he got to uh, San Francisco, Jack the Ripper, he took a ride in the time machine, right? So then H.G. Well has to go there to find uh, the Ripper, Jack the Ripper. Stars, a, stars Malcolm McDowell as H.G. Wells, David Warner as Jack the Ripper, and Mary Stenbergen 
young a young Mary Steinbergen, right? As a, a friend or a person, a girl that uh, H. G. Wells uh, hooks up with. So, um, I didn't really like it. It was kind of like slow. And things only happened here and there. It was kind of like you're actually watching a movie, waiting for something to happen, that kind of thing. And he walks around San Francisco, and they go to dinner dates and watch TV, and you know, and Jack the Ripper's out there murdering prostitutes, and he goes to the cops, and nobody believes him. Of course, who's going to believe this guy, right? But uh, yeah, so what did I give it? I gave it a six. A six for time after time, which I watched on TCM. And those are the movies I watched this week. Now for next week, next Friday's uh, movies that I watched, right, Bob? Bob here, that's me. Uh, there won't there will not be. A video for next week. Next week I'll be at my brother's, Donnie's out in Oshawa, um, you know, having a barbecue, smoking dope and drinking beer and whatever. Okay, that's where I'm going. I'm leaving on Wednesday and I'm coming back on Monday. So I'll be out with my brother um, for those few days. Sammy, my other brother, can't make it. He's uh, moving from where he's living at now, of course, to a new place. So he's kind of busy doing that. So that's what's happening there. So there will be no Bob uh, movies, uh, what he's watched next Friday. But uh, Friday after that, of course, I'll probably be full speed ahead and doing it again. So that's it. All right, movie lovers, talk to you later. I'll be on holidays for five days out in Oshawa.